there's a man who knows his meatballs. The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 295. We've actually done more than 295 weeks. We should really fix that. We had some half episodes. Anyway, I'm Ethan. I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. That's right, and so many, many things that we can't talk about, especially 1996 WCW, on the first and the only wrestling podcast. That's right. So I was watching Johnny B. Bad versus Diamond Dallas Page <laughs> with the Diamond Doll at ringside. They had a match for $6 million. <laughs> The winner of the match would get uh, Kimberly, the Diamond Doll, Mm -hmm. and $6.6 million. (laughs) They have like a giant cartoon check for (laughs) $6.6 million. Anyway. Who's to say which is more valuable? (laughs) 1996 Kimberly Kimberly Page or or millions of dollars? Kimberly was the best worker in that match. Anyway. (laughs) Yeah. So we've already gone hopelessly off the rails here as we are wont to do there's plenty to talk about in wrestling AEW had a pay-per-view this past weekend WWE is on the road for Wrestlemania other companies exist we can start chronologically and go with the AEW pay-per-view and oh boy that was an all timer it was a long show (laughs) the longest show in AEW history Nearly five hours. Mm-hmm. A lot of good wrestling on the show. Mm-hmm. A surprise debut of Shane Swerve Strickland. And uh, another surprise deb- 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 debut with <laughs> William Regal. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff happening on that show. Uh, uh, what do you think of Revolution? Yeah, uh, stop me if you've heard this one before. But uh, it had a lot of really good wrestling, even some wrestling that I would qualify as great wrestling. And then we hit about the four hour mark of the show. And I was I was pretty drained. Um, And I feel like (laughs) I was unable to properly uh, analyze or enjoy the last couple of matches of the show because I was just tired and uh was ready for it to be over so uh i think it was it was it was 11 45 on a sunday night yes so uh yeah i uh i like yeah i think overall it was a good show but it's one of those things where it would probably be good to revisit in isolation in like pick a couple of matches maybe like go back and watch that danielson moxley match you know a few months from now and you might really like it uh but when it was 11 25 p.m and they're in the ring hitting each other and and somebody's bleeding you're like this is probably good but i no longer can tell um but hey uh you know overall i think the chris jericho had his best match since at least the tokyo dome match with kenny if not before (laughs) it was something it was less of a garbage match than that Kenny match was. And I don't mean garbage mm-hmm. as in it was bad. It was just like as far as actually being a match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was less crowd brawling and shtick and playing to the crowd and more uh, a hockey fight, so to speak. And smartest guys on the show for putting that on first and getting the heck out of there because this crowd definitely got tired by the end as well. But uh <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I thought that was really good. I did like the main event, I think. <laughs> um, I thought they had a they had a good match. They had like a good. It's the, uh, the part of the problem is they had like they had a good modern heavyweight championship wrestling match. After right. we had seen blood, we saw you know, the dog collar match with the apparently very controversial CM Punk entrance. And uh, despite them. Like, I don't know how they could have spoon fed you <laughs> that more, but, um, but you had all the violence of the CM Punk match. You had the crazy stunts in the six man. You had every star imaginable that anyone on that's an AEW fan cares about. You had Eric Rowan, all the stars. And 
And then by the time the two Adams got out there for the main event, and credit to them, the crowd was into it partly for the novelty of both men being named Adam so they could do ironic chants. But then they only a big part of it. Yes, but they did kind of get them into it by the end. So credit to them. But yeah, my overall thoughts, some of it was good. Some of it was even very good to great. But my lasting impression of this show, like my impression with a lot of AEW pay-per-views is too long, too long. At about 1030 on all these shows, my brain just shuts off Mm -hmm. and I'm like, well, I am uh, and I'm trying to work during the shows. And so I'm like already only paying like 40 percent attention because I'm trying to type (laughs) and then stuff that just goes on. And then Tony Khan has his press conferences afterwards that go until (sighs) past 2 a.m. (laughs) <laughs> it's just like why why are we why why are we doing this why are we doing this uh regal regal was good on the pay-per-view i don't know how good he was on dynamite this week i'm a like, huge regal fan mm-hmm. but uh yeah he was not super good on dynamite this week yeah i mean I, so it's funny i really enjoyed him uh flirting with tony shivani for the first few minutes oh there. it's that, very fun that was a lot of fun and you know genuinely getting emotional and thanking tony for helping him when he first got to the u.s 30 years ago it's very sweet it's a really nice fun moment but then when it's time to actually like do the promo i thought he just kind of rambled and like he had a lot to say about danielson and then it felt like he just didn't have an idea of what to say about john moxley <laughs> so yes. uh uh He's like, yeah, he's like, Brian Danielson's the greatest wrestler of all time. He's the wrestler I should have been. The only reason every, anybody respects me is because I trained him. And, and John, John Moxley, you're a, you're a cool guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, and I, I know he, he sent out some tweets on, uh, on Thursday uh, apologizing for going over time. So I, even he, I think, would agree that it wasn't a a perfect night for him but i mean going forward maybe we just hopefully he hits his times and and he can he can cut it short and then you also have you know danielson and mockley don't need somebody to talk for them either so they can kind of all share that load as uh, going forward now that he's kind of done his big introductory promo so I guess maybe the result that surprised people the most at revolution was Britt Baker keeping the women's world title over Thunder Rosa in a match that uh, had a lot of shenanigans. Rebel was there taking bombs. Jamie Hayter was there taking bombs. There were belt belt shots. There were curb stomps on the belt, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway. Yeah, I'd really like to talk to whoever laid that match out because... She gets curb stomped on the belt and kicks out. She gets distracted by Rebel, gets curb stomped on the belt, kicks out, which led to her getting distracted by Rebel a second time, getting curb stomped not on the belt and pinned. There's a there's a there's a, a flaw in the logic there. One I I would agree. I would maybe have reversed those those spots maybe or or done three less interference spots or maybe not booked the match uh and but that again this is we're we're going with they just decided not to get anybody else ready for brit and i i guess there i don't i haven't seen like a strong good source report this but there were reports this week that like rosa was gonna win here and then it was changed last minute and if you listen to what Britt said in her promo on Wednesday night, that maybe has some credence to it. Um, She talked about like Rosa being, uh, being more excited this time when she came down the ring, because she actually thought she could win for once or something like that. So um, who can say there's a, there's, there's a lot to this. They decided that because they're in uh, Rosa's hometown of San Antonio next week, that they're going to book a cage match with Rosa against Britt and Rosa will likely win the title in her hometown next on the week anniversary on of the the last their last 
hardcore match. Right. The match where Rosa won and then was not seen on TV for like a month afterwards. <laughs> and Britt Baker cut a promo about how she was the biggest star coming out of that and how, anyway, regardless, uh, it's so, they're so bad at, they're so bad at wrestling. <laughs> it's just, you get, you got one wrestling promotion. that's like, okay, subject to the whims of a billionaire. And now they have a, a bean counter who's making a lot of the financial decisions that influence the creative. And it's like, it's all stocks. And then on the other side, you got the whims of a different eccentric billionaire. It's <laughs> regardless. Mm-hmm. So it's like, did they not know that they were going to be in San Antonio? Like six, they definitely had the date, the building booked more than six weeks out when they first decided that Britt was going to wrestle Thunder Rosa at mm-hmm. the pay per view. They definitely knew they were going to be in San Antonio. So, why did they book this match on pay per view? And then there is the layer there of there appears to be some real life heat. And both of these women have the reputation of maybe being a little bit prickly. Hmm. So there's that. A lot of layers to this. Yeah, I it's I mean, I hope it just makes for good television. Like I <laughs> uh, you know, I'm hoping for like a, you know, some some new version of like a sunny days promo or something. That's what I want out of this. Because if you're sure. going to put people that really hate each other on television together, I hope it, you got to at least make compelling TV out of it. But I mean, unless they did something for Rampage that they taped, I guess we won't really get to see them do any promos on each other before this next match. So I guess we just have to to live on the on the hot gossip and the rumors until we uh, until we learn more. But yeah, I I wouldn't beat someone just to have them win two weeks later and. Um, I would have either done this match in like January and then you have Rosa fight and build back to it or, um, you know, or just hold off on the match. You do some sort of technicality where Britt doesn't defend it against Rosa, even though she's the number one contender. And, you know, you do a you could do a multi-person match or something to get you through this pay-per-view. Um, but yeah, it was. It was a strange night of television and made even even stranger by the uh, the, the following Wednesday of t- TV. So, yeah, I thought that was interesting. I, I would also say that I don't know. I think I just in my head, it made more sense for Adam Cole to be the champion because there's feels like there's more stuff for him to do. Uh, so I guess I was a little surprised as well that Hangman retained. I don't think either of those guys is going to be champion for a long time. <laughs> I think I think CM Punk's going to be champion here pretty soon. Mm-hmm. And so to me, it sense to have Punk beat a heel than beat Hangman Page. But maybe Cole gets his mitts back on the belt. I don't know. They got those specials, this quarterly battle of the belt specials. They They booked a world title match on TV this week with like two hours before the show they were booking stuff for the show as the show was going on who knows what they could do um yeah but regardless i don't think either man is going to be world champion for very long and i know like everybody's like oh mjf's gonna get the title well maybe mjf gets the title and uh and then punk beats mjf or something but cm punk's gonna be world champion very soon i think I, yeah, I think that's true, which is maybe why I feel like you have, I, like I said, I just, I felt like Punk should be the heel for that. And Adam Cole is, you know, the close, closest, like top guy heel they have right now. And plus, depending on how long he would be champion, you could also, I don't, I don't know when Omega's coming back, but, yeah. but there's, there's a lot of stuff you, I just felt like there were more options on the table with Adam, with a heel champion. I think also because AEW as a promotion feels very babyface heavy right now, as evidenced by Hangman Page having to wrestle Lance Archer last month. Um, <laughs> it just doesn't just didn't feel like they have a lot of heels ready, ready raring to go for for Hangman, and it's like yeah, you had you could have MJ off MJF off a loss, wrestle him, but you also have MJF doing whatever he's going to do with Wardlow. It would appear so yeah. 
You have um, MJF, MJF and Wardlow is set up, and also very clearly the it's going to be Cole and Red Dragon against the Bucks and Hangman or the Bucks and Omega soon. Like those, mm-hmm. and then or the Bucks Omega and Hangman, and then Red Dragon gets a fourth. Maybe Roddy Strong gets released by then, <laughs> and you end up with your your next blood and guts match there. It's like those those that like clearly Punk or. Uh, hangman and cole rather are going in directions of like this big stable thing and they don't need the world title for that right yeah so i i, yeah, I guess we'll see i mean i guess the next pay-per-view is in may and obviously as as you stated they just did a world title match on like two hours notice last <laughs> night so he could win or lose it at uh, you know anyone can win or lose the that belt uh, on any given night here here and there but I mean, yeah, I, I like it's not like I don't think AEW fans would want to see Hangman Page wrestle CM Punk and Punk win the title. Like, I think people would still enjoy that and be fine with it. But it's just it just doesn't that just seems like such a weird match to put together in my head, especially with Punk coming off of this like angry blood feud with the, you know, one of the top heels in the company. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of AEW talk. There's still two more things I want to get into. <laughs> With regards to AEW, mm-hmm. uh, Jeff Hardy debuted this week. He sure did. He made sure to do his run in or to do his <laughs> dance before he uh, ran in to save his brother. Was this, by the way, was this the most um, trained to not libel myself? Um, the most erratically booked <laughs> AEW Dynamite ever <laughs> this week. There was so much happening. There was a lot happening. I feel like there's been weirder or like more packed shows than this, which isn't okay. to say this isn't a packed show, especially because like there's stuff I didn't even notice because I I Brian Alvarez did and fast forwarded through some stuff. Uh, like I, I missed FDR firing Tully. Yep. For no reason. <laughs> um, somebody watched the Oldie Anderson segment recently, I guess, and decided they wanted to do a little a little cosplay. Um. But yeah, so like so FDR, I guess, are going babyface, which is fine. Um, but I mean, yeah. are there two more natural heels in the entire world? <laughs> uh, I, I couldn't think of two. Um, <laughs> but hey, you need somebody for the the spooky, the spooky guys to wrestle. The house of black guys need need baby faces. They can't just keep beating pack oh. and pack and Pentagon every week. They need new new baby face teams to run through. So maybe FDR <sighs> can fill that void. That sounds, it doesn't sound good to me. No, nothing, <laughs> nothing involving. Oh, wait, Pentagon and pack. Imagine you're Alex Abraham, Abraham, this, and you signed up to do like Spanish commentary mm-hmm. and backstage interviews two years ago. And now you're wearing a Halloween costume from the Halloween store on, <laughs> on national television every week. Uh, is, this, is this how you planned your career would turn out? I don't know, man. That, he seems to really be into it. <laughs> I think does. this is the role he was born to play. <laughs> he does. I, you, you know, he gives it 120%. You got to sure admire does. that. The other thing I want to touch on was I don't know how much of uh, any or any of the press conference after the show you saw on Sunday night, but CM Punk went on a long thing about. He's glad Vince McMahon um, did not buy Ring of Honor because Vince owns enough of his footage, and he does, and the boys don't get paid off of it. Mm-hmm. And he went on another thing about how he's so grateful to have a second chance in his career because Bret Hart, who he loves, did not get a second chance. And there are guys who get paid millions of dollars to go over to Saudi Arabia and it's a tragedy and it's Brett should have had that opportunity. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it was a very CM Punk uh, promo or series of promos that he cut on WWE and or indirectly WWE indirectly instant man. I don't think he ever, he never said he never used the last name McMahon. He did reference Vince by name. He never referenced WWE, but uh, he re- referenced the network and things like that. And mm-hmm. just a lot of CM Punk being CM Punk and um, crying and things that made me worry about how much 
he's been hit in the head in his life. And um, anyway, I don't necessarily think, and then, you know, he very famously made a, a derogatory comment to the Miz one time on social media about going to Saudi Arabia. And now he's like, Brett should have had the opportunity to go to Saudi, Saudi Arabia. It's just like, you know, maybe he's not the most consistent guy in terms of his, um, his uh, ethics and, and, and morals and uh, w- what he chooses to be outraged about. But uh, as always, there's uh, probably a uh, more than a kernel of truth in everything that he said. And Tony mm-hmm. Khan just sitting there very uncomfortable while he cuts these promos is uh, is good television also. <laughs> Anything on CM Punk um, and all of his comments? Uh, well, yeah, I, I think um, as far as him getting emotional, uh, I know he talked about that the the ring of honor stuff and and get you kind of getting back into that headspace sort of made him made him a little bit uh nostalgic i guess and there's also there's an interview i forget who did it esquire or one of those sites yes at the end of february that talked about that with uh with punk talking about how he how emotional he's been since he got to AEW because he of how miserable <laughs> wrestling had made him for so many years and how he didn't think he would ever go back and and that there that he didn't think that he had you know would have found could have ever found like a sense of camaraderie and you know i think he said as much (laughs) again you could talk about him being consistent or not consistent but talking about i think a quote that, that exists from him is something like there's no such thing as the boys um but he also talked in that in that in that interview about how he uh you know about how he he feels like he's found found a home and and found his passion again and all that and i'm sure getting back into the headspace of 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 his ring of honor days to uh, to do this mjf match was also very overwhelming but yeah him him talking about how he's glad ring of honor won't end up on a tab on the peacock network that nobody looks at and and that yeah the the brett train of thought i didn't completely follow like if unless his idea is like well you know, Brett should be a lot, should have had, should be a lot richer than he is or, or something. And I, I'm not aware of Brett having any like overt financial issues or anything, but. Um, no, I think, Brett's, I think Brett, Brett's had a few divorces, but I think Brett. Sure. And so maybe that would be the only source of any financial issues that he had, but I think Brett's doing okay in terms of his money. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I I yeah, I didn't completely follow his train of thought other than maybe he's he's just coming down off adrenaline and and had like you said, had some some pre existing thoughts. And uh when when it comes to CM Punk talking to W W about WWE, I just always like to remind everyone that uh he thinks they ki- almost killed him. It's not just about booking and bad things like that. And I just I don't think he as a person, and again, there's court cases about what he said and wh- how much of that can be proved and everything. But I think to me, it's like, I think there's always going to be a part of him, especially when asked about something like that, about, you know, Tony Khan getting the, the, the ROH library instead of WWE. That's just going to, it's going to set him off a little bit. I think that's just going to be a part of who CM Punk is for the rest of his life. As long as he's being asked questions on these sorts of, of topics in, in public forums. All right. A lot of AEW talk. There was a lot of AEW this week. There's always a lot of AEW. Mm-hmm. So there's that. WWE. Big news this week. Steve Austin is going to do something? Question mark at WrestleMania on the Kevin Owens show. And then he announced in a pre tape promo this week that whether you want to call it a match, a fight, a brawl, or something, he's going to open up one final can of whoop ass on Kevin Owens at WrestleMania. Steve Austin doing something at WrestleMania. Talking on his podcast about how he talked to Steve and Steve didn't seem very enthusiastic about it. And the fact that we're less than a month out from the show and Steve apparently had not agreed to do a match yet but then i 
I don't. It's very strange. WWE talking about how Steve hasn't done anything at WrestleMania in 19 years, even though he's been on like 10 WrestleManias since then. Mm-hmm. It's like a lot of weird stuff surrounding this Steve Austin doing something. Yeah, I uh, I think <laughs> I think it is. Uh, it's very interesting that both, as you mentioned, WWE's phrasing. They keep talking about how it's been 19 years, um, which was, you know, since he lost to the rock in that, in that final match. And he brought that up in his promo and how he's had to live with that for 19 years. And then, yeah, he went, he goes on this rambling bit. They announced it as Kevin Owens challenged him to appear (laughs) on the KO show (laughs) to fight him. So, you know, he, he asked him to appear on a match. Yes. Yeah. He asked him to appear on a talking segment so they could fight. Uh, is is how that Kevin Owens promo went, but they and the graphic at the end of the show said KO show with Steve Austin question <laughs> mark. Um, <laughs> and then yeah, we got this we got this Austin promo the next day where he says, well, we could call it the KO show or we can call it a match or a promo or whatever, uh, or match or a, or a fight or whatever. And it's like, well, well, what are we gonna call it, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> yes, tell us please. Like it was. It was weird to me. Like I understood them being vague if they if they were like, we don't know what he's going to say yes to. We're still hoping for a match, but just in case, we're giving ourselves this wiggle room. But then he, in his own words, is also apparently unsure of what this is going to be. So that's really fascinating. Look, I understand being fifty seven years old and having a series. Uh, a history of serious neck issues and and spinal stenosis. No, oh, you want me to do this match, but I'm gonna have to take some bumps and figure out what my 57 year old body can take, and I'll let you know how I feel and all that. But then you would think if they asked him about this in December or whatever, that if by the way, how are you only asking Steve Austin about this in December if? You- <laughs> Anyway, but you would think, okay, well, maybe he got in the ring sometime in January and tried taking a couple bumps, and you would think you would know pretty soon how you, how, how you were going to feel. One would think once we got <laughs> right, we're past, we're, we're way past the, uh, the time where you would think you would want to have this all locked in if, yeah. if you're going to have that. Like to me, this suggests it isn't just going to be they talk and Austin gives them a stunner. Like they're going to do spots of some kind together. Yes. And it's just, is it going to go a minute? And, you know, Kevin Owens is going to like kick him in the gut and back him into the corner. And then Austin's going to turn it around and give him a Thez press and a stunner. Or is it going to go like 10 minutes and they're going to do like power bombs and, (laughs) And stuff, right. and Austin's going to sell for him a bunch before he he gives the stunner. It's like to me, it's like this is clearly more than we have seen Austin do in the last two decades or so. But they're still not quite sure like how it's going to go once they actually get there on the day. They they've had plenty of time to figure this out though, and they have still not figured it out. So that's very WWE. Mm-hmm. Dolph Ziggler won the NXT title this week. Finally, the a young forty-one-year-old whippersnapper <laughs> snaps up that that NXT title. I guess you you need a match for for WrestleMania weekend, and they've settled on Dolph Ziggler versus Braun Breaker. Which, all right, it's something to do. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Um, look, Dolph is a guy who can teach an, <laughs> a guy how to have a WWE television match. And if that's what this is really about, NXT, NXT being on national television is kind of the afterthought. And this is really just about getting people like Braun Breaker ready to perform on main show WWE television. Then sure, put him with Ziggler, and then you need, know, when... to, you need to know how to work. Right, you need you need to know how to work a ninety second match. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need to know how to work three minutes 
uh, I mean, counting entrances and then go to a commercial and then come back and do two high spots and go to your, go to your finish. You need to know how to do that. So, yes, yes. I mean, like, I don't, I don't, I don't particularly care. I'm not as offended by NXT as I think most people are. And I have to watch it every week and they just throw a lot of stuff at the wall and some of it sticks and some of it doesn't. And Braun Breaker is really good. And uh, he's a super athlete and he's got the pedigree of, you know, it's like, he, you know, the, the problem is Bruce knows what to do with, with the Steiner and Vince has never know what to do with the Steiner. And one day Braun is going to go to the main roster and God willing, Vince is going to not know what to do with him. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, I think we're far past the era of thinking, Oh no, this person's can't miss. Um, everyone can can miss and probably will miss um, or they'll decide he's making too much money in a year and cut him you know all of these things are possible in in the world wrestling federation so i yeah i i think like i said i think make it, having him work with with you know mid-level main roster guys to get him ready to go up and probably wrestle some of these same guys again for a while um, fine like what if that that's what nxt is now um it's it's a it's a television show second and a a production factory for the main roster shows first yeah the only other wwe thing we really need to get into is uh cody rhodes is apparently coming in this is the most hot and cold story ever (laughs) Raw is in Jacksonville this the, this coming week, and that would be a good place to debut Cody if you wanted to try to stick it to AEW. And if you want him for WrestleMania, it seems like, you know, wh- whatever with Seth Rollins, I think is mm-hmm. the is the is the the prevailing thought. Just who's a top guy who doesn't have anything going on right now? like Seth Rollins. So that would that would make sense. Um yeah, so Cody apparently coming in. Look, I I would think that Cody would not be d- dumb enough somehow. I think would think Cody would not be dumb enough somehow to um leave AEW without any assurances that the other wrestling promotion was going to was going to pay him millions of dollars. And I just, I don't (laughs) think you would, I don't think you would work yourself into a scenario where there's only two companies that would pay you millions of dollars to be, to be in wrestling. And you would somehow leave one without an assurance that the other would not pay you. And so like all the, the stories of negotiations broke down or, he's not coming in or he's going to retire or he's going to start his own thing with Jeff Jarrett and Conrad Thompson (laughs) or whatever. It's just like maybe someday he tries. He's still, he needs to make millions of dollars to support his opulent lifestyle. And so I feel like, uh, of course he's going to go to WWE. I don't know. Maybe I have, over or under thought this or worked myself into a shoot here, but (laughs) Cody raw Jacksonville next week. That could be fun. Yeah. I mean, I think that the biggest tell of this is what you said, which is that Seth is just, is has nothing going on. Right. He he and Owens didn't win the tag belts. Owens is obviously going off in his own direction as we've just seen. And while I don't think they think of Seth, the way they think of, say, Roman Reigns or Brock Lesnar, they still treat him like a ah, top guy. Yes. And I they will they will he will be in a wrestling match at WrestleMania on one of the two nights on one of these two four and a half hour shows. There will be a <laughs> Seth Rollins match. And well, if you're looking around, seems like a big star coming in would need a big star to wrestle at WrestleMania. And Hey, there you go. So that's that to me is like the biggest tell. And yeah, Jack, him debuting in Jacksonville would be a lovely bit of poetry and and kneeling, which I enjoy. 
So yeah, let's, <laughs> let's do it. Yeah. We definitely need more of that in wrestling. There's definitely, this war has been one-sided. <laughs> Pretty boring for a while. Like the coat, like when it broke that Cody was going super cool. Very fun. Yes. Um, and you know, I, I like, I like a good shot thrown, thrown across the bow on the show. Uh, always fun. I wish WWE would do more of it. Uh, because yeah, it's fun. It's fun when they snipe at each other and make fun of each other. So I, and, and doing a little bit of, of poetry there with, uh, with, with Cody debuting in Jacksonville would be, would be just wonderful. Yep. Yep. I think they think, well, I, I guess there's a possibility too that Cody and Seth could team and go after the raw tag team titles. Um, I'm not sure if they've decided yet if they're going to break up <laughs> Orton and Riddle. <laughs> well, that that's a good point because Orton and Riddle did win win the belts back, and Orton cut they, this fiery they, promo about they won how he the loves, juice. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he cut Orton cuts this fiery promo about how you know he's deeply in love with Matt Riddle and <laughs> and wants to spend the rest of his life with him. So. Yeah, uh, I mean, I mean, and that could all be in cl- in a classic WWE fashion that could lead to him, you know, beating the crap out of Matt Riddle next week or something. And the, the tech them winning the belts is just kind of a, a little red herring. But, yes. Uh, but <laughs> I uh, I would think that since they are the champions, yeah, you wouldn't think it, you, you wouldn't think they would just go, oh, well, let's keep being a team and we'll have him wrestle the Street Profits or Right. Or somebody like that, you would think that, yeah, maybe they have like what Vince McMahon would consider a big time opponent because it's Randy Orton, and Randy right. Orton is generally always going to be in a in a pretty top tier match at a WrestleMania. Yep. Becky Lynch broke her voice box, like she shoot broke her larynx or whatever it's called. At a house show in Allentown, Pennsylvania, three weeks before WrestleMania, Mm -hmm. before the culmination of this eight-month story with Bianca Belair, Bianca threw what appeared to be a little bit of an overzealous right hand, whatever, it's not ballet, you know, caught Becky in the throat, fractured her, her voice box. Becky is in the hospital. Becky gets out of the hospital because the greatest baby face promo I've seen in 10 years, <laughs> even though she's the top heel. And uh, yeah, so the psychology of Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair continues to be backwards is, I guess, my point here. Well, I mean, you could just do it. You could have just done a baby face match, you know? Because yeah. people still like Bianca. It's not like she's doing anything. I mean, I guess she injured Becky, so that's a little... <laughs> <laughs> you could argue that's uh that's it's an unpleasant fur- thing to do but it's further complicated the psychology here sure sure but uh yeah o- overall that's uh that's wild because yeah, i saw the picture and i was like is this a picture from like when she had her baby like i didn't i didn't understand the context of it until because uh, i i think i just saw someone post the picture and then right. i had to go look on on her page and see that no she she shoot <laughs> fractured her voice box three weeks out because even though the company doesn't do house shows they make the same amount of money in fact make more money (laughs) if they don't do house shows they have becky lynch working bumble f nowhere house shows (laughs) three weeks out from wrestlemania you're in allentown pennsylvania look i don't nothing against the good people of allentown i've never been to allentown but (laughs) you got you got one of your, you know, four biggest matches at WrestleMania in working each other in Allentown, Pennsylvania on a Sunday night. It <laughs> seems really, really short sighted to me, but whatever. Yeah, whatever. I mean, hey, Brock worked the house show this week. He worked the Madison Square Garden, I think mainly because they want Dave Meltzer to shut up about how WWE is uh, hurting at Madison Square Garden. They really tried to to push that house show on television and like a major angle was going to happen because the last time they were at Madison Square Garden, they did 4,000 people or whatever, which is like the worst they've ever done. Regardless of the fact that they've been back touring for like... To me, the only reason 
not the only reason. It's not a hot product, but also they've been back touring <laughs> for they've been back touring for nine months, and they've run Madison Square Garden for TV, Madison Square Garden for a house show. They ran consecutive nights at Barclay Center of Brooklyn. They've run the UBS Arena on Long Island. There might be another Long Island show there somewhere. They point being, they've been back touring for nine months and they've already run New York like seven times. <laughs> to me, that's the reason Madison Square Garden is did four thousand last time. It's just like even drawing in New York, like how many times can you go see the WWE in in a nine month period? You know, sure, and like. <laughs> My understanding is like ticket prices are higher at Madison Square Garden because it costs out to be more money to run there. Right. So it's also like, oh, well, if they're coming to Brooklyn in a month, maybe you just wait and go to that show and you can get, you know, cheap seats for, for that one and not and not spend an arm and a leg for a house show. But yeah, I I didn't I didn't really make much of them of why they were doing that. I mean when with the fact that they had they had made a big deal out of Brock defending the belt, I was like, "Is this their out in case they decided the last second to not make it title for title at WrestleMania?" But uh, right. no, that's official now. He he beat Austin Theory in ten seconds. Yeah, I don't even know why they bothered keeping it a secret if it was just going to be a guy. Like, <laughs> might as well have just said he's wrestling Austin Theory. But I guess maybe they thought people would get excited and there'd be like some big last minute. Uh surprise appearance by someone but um yeah yeah i don't know it was fine then then they did an angle where roman beat up brock and, and laid him out and brock got to bleed because the rules are different for certain people yes it's very it's very funny how that works it's very funny uh brian daniel said was on i believe it was on uh your 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 home site wrestling observer radio this week and one of the things he said in his conversations with vince mcmahon was uh, Vince, I really want to be able to bleed in my matches. And Vince McMahon told him, well, I can never give that to you. <laughs> and I thought that was wonderful. Yes. Yes. Very heartwarming. Yes. It's, he's a strange fella. He really is. You could say this about any and everyone that we've just discussed. <laughs> a lot of strange characters in this year wrestling business. You don't say. Yeah. Uh, New Japan Cup is going on. It doesn't matter. It doesn't <laughs> matter. It's a month long tournament. They had 48 guys in it or whatever. And two guys got hurt before it started. So 46 guys in it. A 46 man tournament. How do you do a 46 man tournament? I don't know. We'll, f- we'll figure it out. Anyway, the third round has started. Okay, good. Well, we'll report back in three weeks when it ends. There you go. All right. Uh, anything else you want to discuss here? Uh, no, I think that, that about covers everything. Uh, the the Sting Players Tribune article came out this week is worth a read. Good, good stuff from uh, from the Stinger. I, I thought that was fun. I I never really heard him discuss like his addiction issues and things like that at length. So it was uh, it was a good read and has kind of a happy ending with him talking about how honored he is that so many people including cm punk come up to him all the time just to like ask him questions about angles and stuff that he did and and how much he enjoys that role so it's uh that's cool to see i i think that's that's worth the read there if you have a, a few minutes all righty till next time everybody i'm ethan and i'm liam i'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life well, bye bye Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. All right, I got to write an article about Maven working Joey Janela's spring break. Woo! It's a glamorous life. That's right. All the all the biggest stories. That's right. All the hottest goss coming coming at the Wrestling Observer. I was watching uh, Super Brawl six today. <laughs> Naturally.
And uh, the opener was a street fight between the public enemy and the nasty boys. <laughs> and it was a street fight. False count anywhere. So one of the nasty boys goes to pin one of the public enemy in the ring. And the dude gets his foot on the rope. And the referee calls for a rope break. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the rest of the match, they're brawling all over the arena. They're hitting each other with trash cans and chairs, and they're going through tables, and they're hitting each other in the head with chairs and, tra- and just constant weapon shots for <laughs> uh, like 10 minutes. And then mm-hmm. the guy gets his foot on the rope, and they call a rope break. I cackled. <laughs> That's some pretty great. Uh, that's like some TNA stuff. I feel like there's a. Oh yeah, there's a Dave and Brian bit where they do a rope break in a TNA match, and Brian's <laughs> like, "So you're telling me if they went to Antarctica, <laughs> but they fell into some ropes, <laughs> that would be count as a rope break, and it wouldn't count as a pin." And Dave's like, "Well, the pay per view would be over before they got to Antarctica." <laughs> 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 Sounds right. <laughs> I forget where I left off in terms of watching all the WCW pay per views chronologically, mm-hmm. but I, I picked up again in like 1996 here, and uh, the beginning of 1996 pre NWO is still this weird mishmash of. Um, uh, uh, Turner era, um, early WCW battle bowl, lethal lottery, <laughs> and then the Hogan dungeon of doom stuff and all Hogan's cronies. It's this very weird mishmash of, of, of products. That that's after, and that's like just after like the flare savage. Flair Savage, Flair Savage in a cage was, and Hogan Giant in a cage were the two main events of Super Brawl 6. Yeah. So it was like tail end of that. Got it. Yeah. And then Giant, Giant ends up with the title shortly thereafter. Okay. Somehow. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably in a dumb way, but. That's right. Oh yeah, Giants, <laughs> Giants the the champion when Hollywood beats him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> done it again. We're done talking about wrestling. Now let's talk about wrestling. Yes. It's wonderful. I try to keep on keeping on. <laughs> <laughs> 